Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 23rd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start with a couple of news items today from Microsoft regarding the upcoming Windows 2025 release. Microsoft announced that the famous Windows Server Update Service or will be retired after about 20 years. Car functionality will be maintained for now, so you don't have to switch immediately. The tool will remain around, will just no longer be maintained, and no new functionality will be added. Instead, uh, users managing Windows networks, well, you should now basically move to the cloud. There are solutions like AutoPatch and Intune for clients. For servers, they suggest that you use Azure Update Manager. And in the comments uh, to the article at Microsoft, there were a couple notes that, for example, Azure Update Manager, well, that now costs you $5 per month per server. So basically will increase the cost of running these servers for more isolated environments. There's also some hesitancy, of course, exposing systems to the cloud and uh, with that it may be difficult for them to move away from on-premise tools like uh, WAS. And well, for Windows 2025 itself, Microsoft will make it easier to install updates without restarting the system. This process is called hot patching by Microsoft and it's now available in the preview version of uh, Windows 2025. So you can start testing it and play with it. This feature is expected to reduce the need from monthly reboots to apply patches to just a quarterly reboot cycle. There will still be patches that will require reboots, just less of the patches will require reboots. Longer uptimes, of course, will also be nice. And of course, the time to apply the patch will be somewhat reduced with that. Many users, I guess, will still allow for a reboot style procedure until this hot patch process has proven itself to be reliable and not then require unscheduled reboots, which of course is often more disruptive than a scheduled one. And Google continues to push to make TLS certificates safer and better. The latest target is the use of who is as a validation mechanism for domain ownership. So far, domain registrars may validate domain ownership by sending an email to an address listed as a contact for a domain in WIS. Recently, I mentioned that uh, Watchtower, for example, discovered how a configuration oversight in the .mobi registrar allowed tampering with WIS information. Also remember, there were some instances in the past where domain owners didn't realize the importance of these email addresses and didn't uh, secure them uh, correctly. Google's proposal suggests to sunset WIS Reliance as soon as November 1st. Now, I remember until a few years ago, WIS email addresses were really sort of the primary use, how you would validate a TLS certificate. That has changed in recent years, and now it's more DNS or files that you drop on the web server. In particular, with uh, the ACME protocol becoming so popular, as it's being used by Let's Encrypt. In order for this particular change to become effective, the proposal first needs to be voted on by the CA browser forum. I have no idea how realistic it is that this will actually all happen by November 1st, but well, that's at least Google's goal here. In noteworthy vulnerabilities, Versa Network released an update for Versa Director. The REST API for orchestration and management uh, makes both tokens for currently logged in users to authenticated users. And there are certain features in this platform that are meant to be used without authentication. So that can then be used uh, to expose authenticated features in the API. And CISA warns that the Apache Huge Graph vulnerability that was patched in April is now actively being exploited. So if 
you haven't yet, uh, well, it's probably too late now to apply the patch. And that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.